Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design bolt groups in RAM connection standalone. Throughout this video, we will show you the complete workflow for this process, which will include specifying your design configuration, entering your load data bolt arrangement options, and hole and shear plane options. We're going to analyze our existing bolt group and also show you how to optimize a bolt group for the loading that you specified and optimization parameters. We will now turn our attention to our RAM connection standalone application in order to design our bolt group. Now the first step in our workflow is going to be to enter your design configuration. To do that, you're going to select your design tab in the ribbon toolbar and then click on the design code icon. Here I'm going to enter a design code and I'm going to select my AISC 16 LRFD design standard and I'm going to enter a maximum strength ratio limit. Both of these pieces of information will be used in the design of the bolt group. Once you're done entering your connection design information, you can click OK. Now we're ready to move on to the next phase in our design, which is to enter our bolt group information. This will include things like your loading information and also your analysis and design parameters. To start this process, you can select the design tab in the ribbon toolbar and then click on the bolt group icon. Now this will bring you directly to the connection pad for designing a bolt group. So using this tool in RAM Connection Standalone, what this basically does is it allows you to evaluate a bolt group or combination of bolts and plates to determine what their overall capacity is. And you can also use this option as a way to optimize a bolt group for a particular loading or optimization parameters you might have. Now, what makes this a little bit different than your traditional approach for designing connections and RAM connection standalone is this doesn't require you to create a joint before getting into what's the capacity of a particular bolt group. So as you can see, I didn't generate load combinations or create any main members such as beams or girders or columns for this particular type of workflow. Now that I'm in the connection pad, I'm ready to start by entering my general information. So let's go ahead and start here. And I'm going to start with the loading information. Now it's important to note when you enter loads for a bolt group, you're going to enter their factored loads directly within this table. So you're not going to enter load cases for dead loads or live loads separately. You're going to enter your overall factored loads here. So I'm going to create one factored load combination. I'm just going to call it one. And I'm going to enter all of their parameters. Now for some additional information regarding the loads and nomenclature and sign convention, we do have this help window that's available at the bottom of your screen. If you don't see this window, you can also select the help icon, which will activate it for you. So I'm going to go ahead and say that I have an in-plane eccentricity of five inches. You can see the units that are applicable here. And I'm going to enter a shear load that I have on my particular connection as 10 kips with an angle of 30 degrees. Once I'm done entering my loading parameters, I can go ahead and click OK. In addition to that, I'm going to see that my design code is referenced here. This is going to be indicating the same design code that you entered in your general criteria, and that is the location where you should be entering your design code. Next, we're going to ask the program whether or not we want to include corrosive influences. Again, if you want some additional information on any parameter, you can go ahead and review it within the help window. Next, let's go ahead and move on to the analysis method. You can see I have two different options. I have an elastic method and an instantaneous center method. The elastic method uses basic mechanics and superposition to estimate the shear stress in each bolt. The load is considered at the center of gravity of the bolt group and a moment is added to account for the eccentricity. The stresses for each case are then determined and vectorally added together. You can also go with the instantaneous center method. And this considers that the 
translational and rotational events occur simultaneously about an instantaneous center of rotation that is located near a line that is perpendicular to the applied force and passes near the original center of gravity of the bolt group. The method also accounts for the ductility of the bolt group and the potential for load redistribution. For this exercise, we're going to go ahead and select the instantaneous method option. Next, we can enter our prying coefficient, and we can choose whether or not to consider hold, deformation, or to consider sheared edges. Let's go ahead and move down and take a look at the bolt group parameters. Now here you can enter the strength of your bolt group. I'm going to go ahead and go with the United States, AISC, and I'm going to select 3 quarter A325N, and you can see that we do have a full database of bolt options available. Next, I'm going to enter my bolt arrangement. Now, I have a couple different options here. I can go with a matrix, which is basically a defined bolt pattern. You're going to enter the number of columns and number of rows of bolts you have. Or you can enter a custom option, which will allow you basically to enter the coordinates of each of your bolts in your system. I'm going to go with a matrix option. And I'm going to go ahead and say two bolt columns. And I'm going to enter five bolt rows. You can also enter the spacing and edge distances of your bolts. You can select whether or not your bolt group will be staggered. So here's staggered versus non-staggered. You can enter one or two shear planes. I'm going to go with one shear plane. And you can enter the material information for your plates. Okay, the last thing you're going to do is you're going to enter your thickness of your plates and your hole types. You can see we do have standard, oversized, and slotted holes available. At this point, we're ready to review our bolt group information. So the first place I'm going to take a look at is in my ribbon toolbar. Here I can see the interaction ratio for the bolt group I have. So this considers all of the connector information that I entered, as well as the loading that I entered up here. So you can see that my interaction ratio is relatively low for this particular bolt group. Now, if I was using this workflow to determine the capacity of my bolt group, I can go to the results area. So let's go ahead and click on the results to bring up our steel, steel connection report. I would be able to see all the geometric considerations and the design checks that were reviewed. I do have the capacity and the demand indicated here, which resulted in these interaction ratios. Now, if I'd like some additional information on these calculations that were performed, I can click on the View Formulas icon, which would show me all of the equations and variables that were used to arrive at these results. Let's go ahead and close out of the report at this point. Now, in addition to that, we can also use this workflow for optimizing your bolt group. So here I've already entered the loading information. I already told the program what type of holes I want and the um, plate thickness and material. But say I want the program to also tell me, well, how many bolts are really needed for these given parameters? Well, I can enter some optimization pieces of information here. This will optimize the bolt diameter if you choose to select that option, as well as the quantity of bolts, and it allows you to place limits on those. So I'm going to go ahead and say I like the bolt diameter, so I'm going to leave that unselected. I want it to use the bolts I entered. And for a number of columns, I'm going to say I want a minimum of one column and a maximum of four. And for the rows, I want no less than, say, three bolts. Okay. Once you enter all your parameters, let's go ahead and click on this optimize icon, and it'll go ahead and determine which bolt group. Now it's going to consider these optimization parameters, so it's going to give me no less than three bolts because that's what I entered here. Again, I can go back to the results area, and I can review the calculations that were performed. And what we're going to note is for a bolt group, the program will check bolt shear and bearing and tear out of your bolt holes for both plates. If you also had an additional shear plane, that would have some additional calculations in here as well. So let's go ahead and close out of the report. And the last thing we're going to take a look at is take a look at this DXF option. This will be your full detailing of your plate system. 
and your bolt group. You can export this DXF to a CAD drawing for your detailing purposes. Now, if we want to save this bolt group, we're going to go ahead and click on the Save icon. This is our new optimized bolt group, and we can close out of the connection pad. We're going to see that the bolt group was created successfully. So let's go ahead and close out of that, and we can see it appear in our joint selection area. We can come back and edit this bolt group if we needed to. We can go edit, and then we're just going to select Combined Connection. Brings us right back to the connection pad. At this point, this concludes our process for designing a bolt group in RAM Connection Standalone. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.